Well, YouTubers, I'm the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this weather discussion and hurricane discussion for April 25th, 2020. As always, please don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell notifications, and check out my website link in the description. And before we move on with the video, again, there is another weather poll question right in the top big corner of your screen there. Uh, when the question pops up, which will pretty much right now, just pretty much be sure to click the I and whatever response is there. Again, it's a weather related poll question just to see how you guys respond to it and I'll be able to look at the results. So now let's move on to the video. So this is my fourth Atlantic hurricane season forecast and the signs of a potential, potentially active 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. And please consider staying for the whole video so you can really get the most information on this hurricane season. All right, so let's move on here. And for the sake of having, well, once I get done, well, actually, you know, I might want to take my face off the screen. My face was actually kind of getting in the way of the content. So I know you might be saying, why does it say April 27th? Yesterday is the 25th of April. That's when I was planning to do it, but I decided to do it today because some factors did change. We did have a lot of updates coming in today. So I decided to do it today. And then my next outlook would be in about 10 days or so and so on. So this is the fourth, my fourth outlook. So these are not all my numbers. Okay, my forecast is on the very left. 15 to 17 named storms. 8 to 10 hurricanes, 3 to 5 major hurricanes, and 3 to 6 uh, U.S. impacts is my forecast. So basically, what I mean by U.S. impacts means whether the storm brushes the coast, whether it makes a direct landfall, if the storm impacts the U.S. somehow, that's what I mean by U.S. impacts. So we're talking about 3 to 6 of those. All right, AccuWeather has a 14 to 18 named storm forecast, 7 to 9 hurricanes, 2 to 4 major hurricanes, and 2 to 4 U.S. impacts. All right, Colorado State University. 16 named storms, eight hurricanes, four major hurricanes. So kind of cutting everything in half here. Uh, they don't really do a U.S. impacts kind of forecast. Uh, the weather company here, 18 named storms, nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes. So they're pretty on the active side as well. And I totally agree so far. All right, and as always, one there's always going to be one U.S. impact that they talk about. So one U.S. impact plus. Seasonal average, okay, we usually see 12 named storms, six hurricanes, three major hurricanes, and two to four, that is not official, that is my number from looking at data in the past 10 years. I found that usually there's always, usually about one to three or two to four storms that usually impact the U.S. every year, uh, mostly in a minor way on a seasonal basis, but again, they can always strike with potential devastation. All right, last year, we had 18 named storms, six hurricanes, and three major hurricanes, all right, and, and when I looked at the tracking map, it was about five storms impacted the U.S. last year. So this year could be pretty much just as bad, if not a little bit worse, as last year. And the name storms, okay, it could be just about the same, but the hurricanes and the major hurricanes could be a little bit more as well. So that, that's a potential, uh, potentially dangerous part of the forecast here. Here's an Nino 3-4 prediction spot for May. I right, notice, remember... Basically, farther to the right you are, less hurricane activity you're probably going to have. This is your El Nino, La Nina is over here, and in the white is neutral. Okay, this is the zero line. Okay, if you're if to the right of that zero line means above average, left of the zero line means below average. All right, when we're between, when we're right in this zone right here, we call that positive neutral. This zone is called negative neutral. That's La Nina and that's El Nino. All right. And neg I mean, whether it's negative neutral, positive neutral, neutral is pretty much neutral. It's in that white zone. It means that no it's not going to be La Nina or El Nino, but we could be seeing a switch to La Nina. But the point is, is that El Nino is is dying away. It's it's the, the absence of El Nino is what's going to pretty much drive this hurricane season. So a lot of the models for May are in that positive neutral phase, the exception of NASA for now. All right, and look towards June. So this, the, and here's the bottom one, the mean, that's the average of all these models is about 0.3 degrees Celsius above average. But look at June. The, so the mean actually drops below zero by June. That's probably because of NASA. They're really uh, going back towards La Nina there. I don't blame them either. And look at July here. All the models except for Euro and the Cansips and the, um, is, that, is that Mateo or it's media? I like to call it Medio. And, they're really all starting to shift towards the left here. It's kind of the main theme here. And look at August. By August, pretty much every model, I mean, Europeans right on the zero line, but, and the mean of the models is 0.5 degrees below average. 
and that's pretty much your La Nina range. Okay, they put La Nina at negative 0.8. Some, I mean, we kind of declare it as negative 0.5, but either way, that's kind of like your La Nina zone. And now we added the set, they've added the September map, and there you go. Every model's below zero with three out of the eight models here. Yeah, three out of the eight models in that La Nina zone. So by September. And this is definitely something we're going to be watching. This is one of the driving factors into the hurricane season forecast. And the sum of the models is negative 0.6 in the bottom, that mean. Right? What are these two maps? These are the exact same. Yes, you're right. The difference is on the left, this is from March 28th update. And on the right, this is April 11th, the latest update. Right now, these do look pretty identical. The only difference is, is that now we're forecasting a more steeper drop than before. Okay, before we actually had to, like, if you looked at the run, the, the model run from March 14th and compared it to the 28th, it looked really different. The March 28th model run really brought on a big drop over here to the left side of your screen. Now they're forecasting a little bit steeper of a drop, but I mean, if you notice, look towards August and September. Not really much has changed in August, September, sitting just above, if not right on the La Nina line. And that's what the spaghetti models are mostly forecasting here. Not one spaghetti model projects a El Nino face, which is, again, the absence of El Nino is what drives this hurricane season forecast. All right. Most recent, uh, these are the probabilities. Okay, the most recent one is right here. Um, this is the one down here on the bottom of your screen is the one from a couple weeks ago or about a week ago. So, but yeah, between one and two weeks ago, and you can see the difference it makes in just a week or two. All right, look at the month of May. Okay, 0. 0.6 we had before, and now it's 0. 0.5. Okay, June is now dead even as opposed to 0. 0.1 degrees above average. July is now negative 0. 0.6, so that'd be really in the La Nina almost versus negative 0. 0.4 before. Okay, August stays the same, and now September they put it negative 0.8. Uh, versus negative 0.7 and again this is the australia borough of meteorology so these lower numbers up here is something else that's really going to drive our hurricane season all right and let's look at the probabilities of la nina the la nina probabilities before august september were about a sub 50 percent that's why actually that's where they are now excuse me and before they were at 35 to 37 percent and now they're sub 50 percent so the la nina chances have increased all right and look at the chances for a neutral phase it went from like between 60 and 80% to 50 to 70%. So neutral phase chances have also dropped. Okay, and the reason the neutral phase chances are higher now is because we're pretty much heading about to head towards a neutral. And then we, we know that we're gonna hit a uh, neutral soon, like June, and then what happens beyond that, August, September, is uncertain, potentially La Nina. But the point is, again, June on, there is just no chance of, of El Nino. And that's what, again, that's what really counts in driving this hurricane season. All right, Nino 3-4 SST anomalies, again, there are, there are more factors than just the Nino 3-4. We'll be looking at other maps as well. But May, 0.3 above average. July, 0.4 below average. So a really big change in just two months here. And in September, negative 0.6. All right, well, what do these La Nina neutral conditions do? Well, they can drive warmer waters in the Atlantic. And look at this. On the left here, this was from 8 a.m. on March 13th. On the right, this is 8 a.m. from March 25th. Latest data here. All right, and again, Western Gulf of Mexico and just south between Florida and Cuba, two regions here okay, on both on both sides here that have the deep that have the deepest shades of red. Okay, even the Caribbean is still shaded in uh, orange pretty decently here. Okay, and these waters are like anywhere between one up to three degrees Celsius above average, which is more like two to six degrees Fahrenheit above average, approximately. All right. And look at the ocean temperatures. Haven't really changed much, but that 80 degree line has started lifting a little bit farther north. And now the 80 degree line moving towards higher latitudes. Okay, but really not much has changed before, except that the northern Caribbean, just south of Cuba, though, that's changed a lot. It went from 28 to well over 29. So, and also look at the, the, the northern tip of South America right there. There's a lot of pink shades. So that's near 90. That's like bath water. I'm pretty sure that's like a bay. Hey, and check out the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> if only uh, Tropical Depression 1 was sitting there, it'd be a lot stronger of a storm. All right, but again, the Gulf Stream, the southern part of the Gulf Stream by Florida is at 80 degrees. But even the Gulf Stream, all the way up to northern latitudes here, we're talking about at least, you know, 21 degrees Celsius, which is like 70s. So still some warmer waters here. 
Ocean temperature anomalies. Here's April 13th. Here's April 25th. Not much has changed. There has been a little bit area of blue that has increased here, but like I said, it's going to be an, at least another three months before activity really starts to develop out here. So I kind of take this with a grain of salt for now, but it's just something to look at in, ter in terms of how our hurricane season could potentially behave. Our actual ocean temperatures out in the Eastern Atlantic, again, generally in the MDR region right here where hurricanes usually form later in the season, around the 70s, okay? Kind of similar to what it was before, but eventually this map will be filled with yellows and oranges by the time hurricane season starts to come to an end in its peak, and ocean temperatures will continue to rise well into their 80s. Don't worry. Like I said, it's April, it's early, but it's nice to talk about these, um, it's nice to have these hurricane discussions and this forecast to kind of talk about it. Caribbean, before... About 10 days ago, 12 days ago, we were 0.78 above average. Now we're 0.63 above average. Average, all right? So it's a little bit of a drop that we had in the Caribbean, but it's still above average, okay? The fact that it's like 0.6 degrees above average and 0.5, it, it really makes a huge difference in the into our hurricane season here. And check out the Atlantic MDR. 0.5 before, 0.3 above now, but still the MDR is actually still above average temperatures. The ocean temperatures for the MDR. So again, that does really count as well. North Atlantic, that has actually improved as well. So we were 0.25 degrees below uh, below average. Now we're only about negative 0.1 below average. So we've improved in that department in the North Atlantic Ocean. East Tropical Atlantic. Okay, so the MDR okay kind of refers to uh, kind of this gen this specific area. Okay, maybe maybe it's actually a little bit wider than that. Maybe it's more like this area in the MDR. When they talk about the East Tropical Atlantic, though, they mean like the whole thing in general. They mean the whole entire East Tropical Atlantic. And that actually took a, like a huge dive. It does, as you can see, it does kind of vary a lot day to day. Um, before we were 0.34 degrees above average, now we're only 0.1. It kind of looks like a playground slide, doesn't it? Just tumbled down. Um, but it looks like it may start to have a little curve. Maybe it's going to start to go back up again. All right, because like with every big up, there's a down, and then it goes back up. All right, so there, there is going to be some fluctuations in this. But like I said, activity won't start to form out there for another couple of months at least. Nino 3-4 region, remember, we want this to be lower if you want more hurricane activity here. All right, and then obviously vice versa. Before, 0. 0.57 degrees above average. Now it's 0. 0.54, so that pretty much hasn't moved at all. That's right now borderline neutral El Nino phase. Let's look at the dry air. All right, we have some pretty dry air. Okay, nothing that's not typical this time of year. There's always going to be dry air early in the season. That'll eventually start to fade away, but there's no really dry air in this region here either. Although the Gulf of Mexico does have some uh, dry air in there as well. Let's look at that tropical cyclone heat. All right, take a look at, um, well, this is a 12-day difference. So on the left is April 12th. On the right is April 24th, the latest date I can find. And this doesn't really update every single day because not much will change in the day. But we had some oranges and a little area of red, but that area of red has kind of grown a little bit since about 12 days ago. So that's definitely some, that's something that we need to kind of look at. And also, check out here. If you go right between Cuba and the Dominican Republic here and go south, right between Haiti and Cuba, there's an area of orange there that there really wasn't there before. So the tropical cyclonic heat, I mean, we're talking about orange and red. We're talking about like this high on the graph. So, I mean, that's not as, like, as high as you can get, but that's pretty intense heat so to really get those tropical cyclones going. Wind shear, there is an area of pretty um, low wind shear where hurricanes can, or tropical systems can survive in. I've outlined that in black. So, it's potential, I mean, it's a, I mean, if a storm happened to work its way in there, but other than that, tons of wind shear through the Gulf of Mexico, Northern Caribbean, Western Atlantic, and the tropical Atlantic. Nothing that's, you know, too out of, the ordinary for this time of year, you still eventually all start to fade away. One day, two, three, five days out, the wind shear is going to remain pretty constant over the Atlantic, or tropical Atlantic, but, you know, one to two days out, because of the, high, the presence of that high pressure, could potentially start to calm those winds coming out of the west, and the high pressure could start to turn things that way. And so, if a cyclone were to develop, that would be the region in the next day or two. But nothing is there, okay? It's way too early to have... Cyclones forming out there. All right, CFS2 here, high pressure system. Okay, this is from the 25th of April to the 2nd of May. Um, that's what the CFS is forecasting, and 
I mean, if we do have some activity in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, it's going to start getting pushed up this way. Kind of pushed up in that west northwest direction. So that's how the, the tropical cyclone is going to steer. And so that is it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope this got you up to date on the latest hurricane information. Okay, I will be doing another outlook soon, so stay tuned for that. I am the Weather Dude, signing off. Until next time. Thank you for watching.